Hi, Chantel. Hey, Rexian. How are you? I'm good. A lot of people have been asking and saying, hey, is your Jersey recap coming out soon? I know. Because uh, <laughs> we usually, no matter what, we will like do it like right after the episode or we'll do it the morning of. So, um, but we're jerseyed out. We're tired. So, you know, it's, it's a lot. We had to finally just say, okay, let's get, let's get this done. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I mean, yesterday we had a little watch party. Did you have fun, Rexian? Rexian got I a little to... drunk, you guys. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. she's not allowed over anymore. Yeah. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, we're definitely not recording tonight. So I literally woke up at four in the morning to, cause I was watching, but watch parties are a little bit complicated. Cause it's like, are you actually paying attention? I know you definitely were not paying attention. And I'm like, oh my, okay, like, hello, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be live chatting in our Patreon. And then I'm like, yeah, what's no. happening? And then like, we came in writing notes. So I was like, it was a shit show. I mean, it was fun, but like, you know, this is our job. So at the same time, like, you know, I think we should, we need to choose a job more than the fun yeah. for these and things like that. So yeah. from now on out, we'd be sitting in my room by myself, you know, writing on notes. Just... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No time for that. <laughs> right. Well, let's get into the episode because I obviously have a lot to say. I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Uh, so we're skipping the first seven minutes because we did a seven minute thing on our previous episode. So go listen back if you haven't. But I will say, Chantal, I was cracking up about the shower shoes because when Melissa was like to Antonia, you need shower shoes because my husband takes shower shoes every time we're in the hotel. And when I was in the hospital having babies, like I always bring shower shoes everywhere. I'm so scared. I don't bring them everywhere, but I have the shoes that have the little holes in them to like, they're literally shower shoes. Do you even have that? Or are you just like wear your regular, like, no, I'll sandals? get, I'll, I'll get like old Navy sandals and yeah. I'll, I'll like throw them after. Oh, okay. So, like, I have the ones that have the holes. Like, those are legit. Yeah. Okay. That's really intense. It doesn't sound like you bring them around, though. So, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, because, like, I'm from the hotel world. So, like, I know what to do. Like, sometimes if I think a hotel is, like, really, like, grimy, what I'll do is I would put, um, I'll put, like, that shower thing on, like, in the inside of it. Like, the towel on the floor. Oh, okay. That's so annoying, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Anyways. Okay. Well, it's always the casual digs, by the way, with the Gorgas. They try to do it so casually. So Melissa brings up how her husband is going to be working when he moves in Antonia. And Joe um, chimes in and he's like, well, I've done it before. Melissa pretends like she forgot that Joe moved in his nieces before Antonia. And side note, Melissa forgets nothing. Just watch season three and you'll understand why I'm saying this because there was always so much tit for tat where it's like, oh, th- you know, Teresa did this, you know, Teresa was like, Melissa did this. So it's like, no, there's no forgetting. Okay. So, yeah. you know, I just, maybe she gets salty that Joe, you know, he's had other experiences with like Gia, let's say, especially in the past. So do you think she gets salty about that? Yeah, I think, like, she would want her daughter to be the first for everything. You yeah, know? yeah. So, I know, yeah, especially because Chantel and I are rewatching and we're doing Patreon episodes of, um, Melissa was always bothered that, bothered that Joe did things with Gia at the time, so... Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt that right there. But I do love Teresa and Louie's family dynamic. And the kids are so respectful. Even little Lou. I love seeing Oh my god, little Lou together. is so cute. He might be the new Frankie. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I, I know. Like, like two total different looks. I feel like little Lou looks really little. Like he looks very young. He's He is young. But like he's really, yeah. he's going to be really gorgeous when he gets older. If he like, you know, yeah. takes care of himself the right way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Melissa, I don't know how that meant, but Melissa tells Joe Gorga how they are going to see Teresa and Jen Aiden at Jen Fester's party. And Joe is trying to convince himself that he doesn't give a shit. Then in the confessional, Melissa says she doesn't want to answer any questions about Teresa. But truthfully, the only headlines Melissa has made in regards to press, like let's say this last week, was when she spoke of Teresa. Well, you know what's so funny about this whole situation, about this whole like Teresa, blah, blah. Like where Teresa, like when she says, like, I don't give a shit about them, like you feel it with them. It's yeah. like they're just doing it because they know they have to say that and they have to move on that way because she's moving on that way. So they would look stupid and like they can't play the victim anymore. Like, oh, we, we're trying. It's like, no, right. clearly you're not trying because you didn't go to her own wedding. So, like, exactly. You guys, yeah. And then, 
unforgivable. Yeah, exactly. So like they kind of have to make that stance now and because they would look crazy if they didn't. And the funny thing is they, they act like they don't care. But when, when they do see each other, like she hears her, you see Melissa just roll her eyes. Like, at Or the how party. about Joe's face? Yeah. So it's like, oh, do you really not care? Because Teresa literally acts unbothered and un- yeah, she didn't so look at you. Like crazy. she knew who you guys were. And here you guys are like, he was like, didn't even turn around because he heard his sister. Yeah. And then you hear, you see Melissa rolling her eyes and it's like you you see them make those comments in their confessionals and it's just so funny yeah i did crap crack up though with joe's suggestion of getting jen fessler the autograph gift of the guy she banged oh i did like that too yeah that was funny i said i don't even know who the guy was i so i joe was like i'm um, granafini the one from um from the mafia show that they all watched it was like the one that she talked about on the bus like and everyone's like freaking out that she like had no um, i know i remember oh. but i just don't know like his real name in real life but i at the sopranos i think yes yeah, sopranos uh-huh. yeah i feel like i tried watching and i couldn't get into it but poor jen fessler she would love to be a full-time housewife but production doesn't think she's worthy enough so they give her the front title and it looks like jen fessler is going to record just as much as the other real housewives so how like i don't know i would feel so insulted that i'm not an actual housewife if i'm doing the i mean same. because yeah because the first episode she was in it more than um jennifer yeah. was she was in it more than danielle was so it's like what the heck well jennifer was in italy That's, i know i'm just saying yeah but yeah no for sure margaret arrives and do you think she's trying to make her storyline about the ex-husband yeah, absolutely. What and like, I mean, she's making it seem like, you know, she's lost. Her storylines is that like she's lost because of the ex husband. <sighs> like, the ex husband, you know, passing away has now made her feel like a certain type of way. And then I think we see, we're going to see like her and Joe, we saw in the previews, like, of like now their relationship is not like the best because mm. of it. It's like, okay. Yeah. Well, well, I just came out Margaret really looks like she really, you guys, this is, it's too much. Yeah, it is. It's like, is she still on it? I don't even know. It it, it really is too much. Uh, so Margaret says that Teresa's dead to her and they bring up how Louis called Margaret's son and threatened him with Jen Fessler saying that person would be dead to them if they did that to her kid. And the thing is, Louis never did that. And they all know that. But Margaret really thought making this a thing may get Teresa fired off the show. Margaret says she never wants to talk about Teresa again, never wants anyone to mention Margaret to Teresa. And Jen Fessler basically says, if she's dead to you, she's dead to me which is very interesting. Wait, which is funny because, like, you guys are about to see her. You guys are about to say hi. Like, there's no way going around it. Like, if you truly, truly, truly cared and said, I don't want to ever see this woman in my life, you would quit the show. You would yeah. be done with the show. So it's like you clearly don't care that much. And it's just like right. you were trying to take that stance to try to get her fired. Right. Margaret says she doesn't want that negativity, but do you realize when Margaret came onto the show, she brought so much negativity? Like we found out she reached out to Siggy Flicker's husband's ex-wife, which is why Siggy walked away. Margaret reached out to Louis's obsessive ex. Margaret was behind the Jackie Evan rumor. She revealed the Bill Aiden rumor. I mean, even the Melissa Gorga kissing a guy came from Margaret Josephs, but she then claims she doesn't want negativity. Exactly. Yeah. They try to spin it, y'all. They they really I do. I know. Shout out to Ask the Pro for sponsoring this episode and providing us with free samples. All right, you guys know I've been congested with a stuffy nose for months that I even struggled podcasting. And with the weather change here in Michigan, my allergies have been all over the place. It's completely thrown me off. The worst part was I didn't sound like myself, but as you can see, I sound a lot better after using Astapro. Astapro is the fastest solution to nasal allergy symptoms. It starts working in 30 minutes while other allergy sprays takes hours. Astapro delivers full prescription strength indoor and outdoor allergy relief from nasal congestion, runny and itchy nose, and sneezing. Get fast acting nasal allergy symptom relief with Astapro. Go to astaproallergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go. Again, A S T E P R O allergy.com. Use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. So Teresa and Louie meet with Dolores and Polly for lunch, and I died at the meatball story with Dolores, saying she doesn't cook anymore after meatballs almost killed Polly. Oh, my gosh. I feel like we all have, like, one food, you know? So I was, like, cracking up about that. But, God, I would die if I wouldn't wasn't able to eat Italian food. That's my Literally. favorite food ever. I will say, like, they're, like, you know, like, them going on a double date, it just felt so natural to me, you know? Yeah. It's like, they're genuine friends. Like, they're having a good time. It wasn't, like, it wasn't forced. So I like stuff yeah. like that. 
They talk engagement and Polly needs to get divorced first. And I agree. We did talk about this in our previous episode where John Fuda wanted an audience talk um, things out, which would be which would be on Jen Fessler's birthday. So they mentioned how Frank told Louis how the cast got together prior to last year's reunion on how they were and, and said they were all going to take Teresa and Louis down. And if you which- watch the. Oh, go ahead. You want to say, we literally said that from the minute we watched the first episode of the reunion. Yeah, like, there's no way tell. they didn't get together. Right. Well, they, they, they're they dumb and they posted pictures and they removed it. Um, But yeah, so if you watch the reunion, it was obvious they met prior and planned what each person was going to say and do. Teresa says she's also going to confront Jen Fessler because Danielle had told her at New York, Jen Fessler said to the group sitting across from them that they didn't execute the plan correctly. Polly actually admits to hearing that, which also confirms what Frank told Louis. And Polly says that Jen Fessler was saying that to Joe Gorga. Oh my gosh. Right. Such losers. What I didn't like. Like you can't do anything weird with this group. It's like you guys don't you shouldn't trust anybody. Like not even I your swear. own spouse. <laughs> yeah, I know. I swear. What I didn't like with Dolores, she was like, it's normal that we all meet before the reunion yep. because that's weird and that's absolutely not true at all like no when Dolo, anyone... yeah that was a weird thing from Dolores I'm not gonna lie yeah and Dolores was like yeah and then it's like she did that and then she also did something very weird on Watch Robins Live like where she really truly was playing like we always see she plays offense and like sometimes it's a good thing but it was like it's almost like she was um picking a side in a sense I don't know yeah, a lot of people see, are saying that they do feel like now she's hanging out with the other side a little bit more after, like, all that social media drama. But I don't know. I just feel like, you know, I mean, Teresa w- was – she's in L.A. doing press, and, you know, so Jennifer it was her Easter. So, I mean, it's not like they did anything. So I don't know. But – it's Jen Fessler's party, and Jennifer and Teresa are going together. Bill couldn't go because of surgery, and Teresa says Louis had a business meeting last minute. The best thing that could have happened was Louis not showing up to this party. Oh, yeah, 100%, because you know what? They 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 planned exactly yeah. what they were going to say to him, because exactly, because when, remember when Louis texted him, he's like, we'll talk at the party. So they like were waiting for this opportunity. Yeah. They like had all these like conversations about it, and I'm so happy Louis didn't come. So happy. And Louis did tell like everyone he was going, so it's like there wasn't any inkling that he might not go. So it was so great when he didn't go. Like, I'm sure he got a business meeting and he was like, is it even worth it for me to skip this to go? No, it's not. Because he knew what was going to happen. Um, and it, what's what was interesting, Chantal, is I was just like thinking about Thirsty Fuda, uh, a.k.a. Fuda Lips, and how he probably didn't sleep the night before in excitement of all the things <laughs> he was going to say to Louis, probably calling the men like, yo, yo, you better back me. Like, I could totally see that with him. 1,000%. Rachel, aka Bravo Lover one two three four, she's acting like she liked Danielle last season, which is the biggest lie ever. Rachel never gave Danielle a chance at all, but she realized that was a you know really wrong move, so she has befriended her this season. Uh, you know, prior to this party, a lot came out on the internet. This was when the ex Bernie was speaking out, saying that John Fuda was the biggest drug dealer in Bergen County and that he likes purple double sided dildos, which I believe he was into that and nothing wrong with that. But I was dying with Bravo being messy using that tweet about John Fuda using a dildo from the Twitter account because the Twitter account's cover photo was a picture of Melissa <laughs> on a cover of a magazine where it says Melissa cheated on Joe. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even notice yeah. that. Yeah, I totally did. Uh, Teresa and Jen walk into the party. And, of course, Thirsty Fuda, you know, he's been staring at the door all night. And he literally gives the guys a warning when Teresa walks in. Is this normal for men to do? No. Like, they, you know, we keep saying we like Jersey because of the men sometimes and, like, b- back in the day. But this was just, like, an abomination. Like, episode Not this where, like, type of men. Yeah, Not like, it's, men. They're, they're showing them in the corner. They're showing every reaction. It's like, what what is going on right it's now? It's all too much. It truly is all too much. Yes, I like when the men were on, like, a Chris Larita, you no, know. No, we like when the men are having fun with the girls, like, drinking and, like, or, or having a fun time. When, when, the, when the, like, when Chris Larita, when, like, when drama was happening, especially in the earlier seasons with the wives like they didn't get involved in it you know so they you know they would talk about feelings but they never got involved in that stuff and that is a jersey that i like these people that they're casting i don't know who they're casting anymore they're waiting for them to they're the ones like they're like telling the guys like hey start drama and it's weird it's like what's happening 
Every time Teresa walks prin- near Princess Gorga, he looks so nervous. And just like you said, Chantal, Teresa is so unfazed. She, uh, when she walked in, she does say hi to Margaret, and Margaret disregards her and walks away. And it's like, okay, again, you guys, like, just I, I can't. It was weird. I didn't even see her even say like the little hi that she told Melissa that she said. And it's like, okay, did you even say hi to Teresa? And like, it's like she was so scared to even tell. What do you Melissa mean? No, Ter- no, no, no. Teresa did say hi to Margaret. But no, Margaret, Margaret made hi. it seem like she did this like small hi, like a. a weird hi to her oh, she's like okay. she's like i told her like hi but like i walked away right away when she told melissa and it's like you didn't even do that though yeah because i didn't see her say hi at all i thought she was talking about jen aiden that she did that with jen aiden Mm-mm, with Teresa. so margaret is acting salty that jackie hasn't given her a copy of her book yet and it's like margaret don't act salty about it when it's not about you if you really want one text jackie and say you'd love to have a copy of her book before it comes out and don't just like wait for jackie to send it so that you could get insulted if she doesn't Exactly. This is like the step one of what goes wrong in their relationship. The Danielle saying hi to Jackie was so awkward. And I love how Margaret was acting like it wasn't. I feel like Margaret is very dismissive towards Jackie. Oh, you think so? Yeah, because it was so awkward. Like, and uh, Jackie was like, that was awkward. And she's like, no, it wasn't. And I'm like, no, it was, <laughs> it was awkward. Your friend's saying it's awkward. It's awkward. Yeah. The worst thing Sirens Media is doing, which is a production company, is giving thirsty food has so much attention on the show more it's than weird. his wife yeah princess looks at Polly like where's your boy your boy didn't show up and Polly is like who frank and then princess gorga is looking at fuda like come on mention louis name and Polly's not having any of it he's like say his fucking name who and fuda lip says where's louis and the way he just like ugh, his demeanor everything ick 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 and then Polly says louis away at business and thirsty fuda lip says he's surprised because louis reached out to him and wanted to talk and fuda told him he would see him on tuesday and I don't know why that would make food a surprise. It's not like Louis was like, bet, see you Tuesday, let's talk there. Yeah. None of that happened. So it's like, what are you surprised about? You should have been like a grown man and went on a, right. had a conversation with him. And you don't yeah. need to see him at a party. Yeah. And then Broke Plumber, who lives off Margaret, says billionaires are very busy. While Fuda Lip says Louis must be on a private jet somewhere. Again, I am so happy that Louis wasn't there. Why and, are they, and like the way that yeah. they're just all talking about him the Hater. whole time. Oh my God, it's so like, is this what guys, I don't know. Is this a Jersey thing? What's happening? And even when he's not there, they're still discussing him. So it's just weird to see grown men at their age gossip like this. It's, yep. and, but you can tell Polly doesn't, Polly don't fuck with that. He's not like that. Polly says, like, Polly makes sure to say, say to him, I saw the text, and a party's not a place to talk to someone. And Princess, when if you guys pay attention to Princess's face, he sees red when he starts realizing what's happening and that Polly's yeah. defending him. Please go back and look at his face. He's livid. This isn't going according to the plan they had. And Polly's actually having Louis back. Polly says it should be private, period. And Thirsty Food Ellipse says, why would he give a man the respect to meet him somewhere? Uh, the fuck? Like, you just Say you want an audience. Just then, say you want backup. Then don't talk to me at all. Then yeah. if you're not gonna meet him private. Then why talk to talk, him? Yeah, publicly. Like, what? What is it? What's the difference? Why take him out and ha- have a conversation outside? Like, it's, exactly it's, it doesn't matter. John says you. John. Um. So Fudalip says you guys got his back, and he's just mad that Polly's talking truth. Polly says I'm your friend, and I'm his friend. Polly in this moment is showing us that he don't care who it is and what it is. What's right is right and wrong is wrong. And Fudalips is wrong on the subject, period. Mm-hmm. Thirsty Fuda is getting sensitive and says that it looks like Polly is on Louis' side. I'm getting the ick as to why a grown ma- man is telling some another man you have to pick sides. And like also like Polly's like a little bit older than um, Fudalips. So it's like, wh- are you good? And it's like, okay, like, again, are you trying not to have a conversation? Are you trying not to like, move on? Because if you just want this continuous drama, then, like, why would – what? then Louis should never even talk to you in the first place. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's what Polly is, is like getting is that he, he can see that like all they want is drama. They don't mean, he doesn't want to be a man and just like even squash anything. So he's like, Ew, what's happening here? Yeah. And Polly just, he doesn't play like that. You, you know, you can tell he's contemplating knock, knocking food lips out and <laughs> Joe, and then princess Gorga's like, Oh, you back him. And Dolores is seeing things get heated. So she gets in the middle, which I understand, but I also wanted to see how it would have played out if she didn't do that because they did start, throwing the shut the f up and you could tell paulie would absolutely destroy food ellipse with just a poke yeah 
Before Jen and Teresa leave, Teresa approaches Rachel Fuda, a.k.a. Bravo Lover1234, and says she doesn't want to talk now, but she says, you know, at the end of the day, Rachel's husband went for Louie trying to ruin his reputation, and Rachel says that Louie and Thirsty Fuda Lips should have uh, or should have a separate conversation. Teresa says that Louie tried before the party, and Bravo Lover1234 is like, he's not here. She's very, she's very drunk at this point. You could like, tell she was oh wasted. God. Like, you could just tell so she was so sloppy. Like, even though like way the way her like everything was i'm just like is she okay They're, well they were all tipsy so i don't want to just say her but she yeah. is wasted no she was drunk yeah um Teresa does say you know he just wanted to have it you know before not for an audience and rachel putting her hands out you know she starts saying "Ooh, a magic trick and i was like wait what <laughs> i don't know caught that i don't know i don't know what that meant she's like john would have pulled louis outside and then she's like john and louis are never going to be friends acting like louis wants to be his friend which is then, not the case at all exactly but then it's just like then don't talk to me ever yeah Teresa says a gentleman would meet privately and bravo lover one two three four again is like what do you know about gentlemen <laughs> literally she's all over the place like a hot mess express and Teresa's like my husband's a gentleman and then the best part of the entire Entire episode, Teresa says, do you want to know what your husband said to my husband? He said, I have tremendous respect for your wife because we both went to jail. He was <laughs> the biggest drug dealer in Bergen County. I died. I, oh my gosh. I the way that Teresa ate. just like really like like plays that to her like in, oh in like the best way ever. I mean, oh she, I swear she really she really was amazing this episode. She Even really the way was. like right after this, like when she like goes to talk to John Fuda, she like is whipping out her brain and like, yeah. like come on, like you want to come for me? Like it was it was just like this is why she's iconic. I know. Teresa's like, don't come for my husband or I will come for yours, which is fair. And then Bravo yeah. Lover one two three four and her crew really went into this thinking they're going to destroy Louie another season. And Teresa's like, it's not happening. I'm not playing with you guys. So I was dying when Teresa and Jennifer made sure to make that candy stop. And Teresa's literally dropping candy, having no damn idea that she is missing putting it in the bag. She We're actually- the best. Or oh, the best is like when she's having this conversation with Rachel, um, and then you just see Jennifer like, "Oh, this is not going good." She's just like whispering yeah. under her breath, and she's like right there, like listening to yeah. all of this, and she was like acting so like nonchalant. Yeah. Well, so Teresa on her Instagram story today was like, "Hey guys, I didn't drop the candy. Here they are," and she had the starburst, and it was so funny. <laughs> you have to go look at it. But then Thirsty Food Ellipse intentionally passes Teresa and she's like, hi, yeah, hi. Yeah. She's just, you know, and then she goes double-sided dildo, like unfazed. And Rachel's like, Teresa, you want to tell my husband what you said? And it's like, like, yeah. Yeah, but it's like Rachel, aka Bravo Lover One Two Three Four. What do you want Fuda to do? Fight her? I'm, no, I she really, really did. I think I think because Rachel can't handle anything. Like, and her 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 husband's like the mouthpiece, so she like wants yeah. him to be there, so like uh. she he could be do, doing things, and it's like weird. Teresa, she isn't afraid of anyone or anything. She's like, bring it. Boss up, Food Ellipse. And Food Ellipse is like, you listen to an inmate who's in prison. And Teresa's like, we were both in prison, correct? <laughs> and Rachel is so sloppy drunk. She's like, you're going to talk to my husband. And this is probably going to shock you all, but I think the Foodas are worse than the Gorgas. Yeah, no, I really I like it. So. I mean, especially for this to be the, their second season, like this yeah. is not where they're going. It's really scary. Thirsty Fuda keeps shouting has been at Teresa and thinks he did something there. And I truly don't think I've ever seen someone so thirsty in my entire life. It's honestly crazy. It's like, and it's like made up stuff too. So it's like, what's like, they're doing the most. They're really, truly doing the most. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So following the episode, the most ick thing in housewife history happened. John Fuda Thirsty Fuda released a press release that he put together from his Gmail account. Oh my where God, you stated, guys. Where it stated, Mr. Fuda has become a beloved figure among fans and supporters. And before we get into what was said, I need Fuda Lips to really understand the show is about his wife. It's not house husbands and he's doing the most like the man really thought and does he, he think put he's out a press release yeah does he think he's like an a-list celebrity to like or like this like all-star That's football what player saying. to like put out a press release yeah, from Is his Gmail real? account. From his Gmail account after one episode. If that's not cringe. I don't know what is. I feel bad because he obviously does want to be liked and accepted. But going on a reality show like this won't give you that, especially when you do and say so many questionable things. He like could have been liked. Like it's like if you were just a little bit more chill and play, played played it cool, and like if someone yeah. attacks you, like look at Polly. Like we're obsessed with Polly. All like you right. know, it's like 
he's saying the right things. He's not being too extra. It's like, that's what you should have been doing. And and keep in mind, and Joe know, is very liked, even though we don't like Joe. Yeah. A lot of people like Jonas because he like he's he could be a likable person, but like the way that yeah. you're doing, you're very you're very unlikable. You're not even like cool to anybody. And let's not forget, Bill's affair was mentioned on camera, and he's a plastic surgeon. He didn't make a statement. Louis' past was discussed on camera. He didn't release a statement. The rumor of Jackie's husband cheating was brought up on camera. He didn't address it. Frank Sr., you know, losing his license was mentioned on camera. He didn't release a statement. It's all too much. It really, really is. And I just want to kind of touch on what he said because, you guys, I was I, – did you read the press release, Chantal? Not all of it. No, I just, like, read the first, like, couple well, sentences. And, and, and that's what – you know what? I think a lot of people, that's what they did. They didn't actually, you know, really read it. They just saw, like, he did a press release off Gmail. Um, but he it says, like, John Fuda responds to castmates' attempt to disparage his character and – um, it says in a recent episode of New Jersey, certain cast members have resorted to dredging up Mr. Fuda's past in an apparent attempt to discredit him and undermine his reputation. So despite these efforts, Mr. Fuda remains steadfast in his commitment to integrity, honesty, and personal growth. You guys, I'm so scared. <laughs> and he said, while I'm not proud of every aspect of my history, I've worked uh, tirelessly to overcome challenges and strive for a better future. I refuse to be defined by my past mistakes. And then you, know, you don't have to be. You, you could grow up like no one. You're the one that's digging up other people's past mistakes right he said mr fuda there's more but it says mr fuda uh response serves as a reminder that everyone deserves a chance to evolve and move forward from their past but all he's doing is bringing up louis past all he now he's bringing up Teresa's past you know uh he's we've gonna seen bring that, up, we've like, seen her, the previews calling yeah. her the poster child of fraud it's like so then if you want that same grace and that same respect exactly. then why are you doing it yeah. and also too it's like it's really funny how um he, he is he, it's like almost he's like acting he's like in politics and where he needs to be this yeah. like Diplomatic person to come so across, but it's like you, you're an entrepreneur, you just have you just run your businesses, you're fine. And like, what business you, your tiles? Like, are, are you joking? Do you, what the hell? I please don't make a statement, yeah. But yeah, you guys, I'm totally getting the ick, and I don't know, this is gonna be a long season, you guys. It's gonna be a long season. It was a great first episode, though, for like a housewife, like you know, premiere. I thought it was a great episode. Yeah, me too. I thought so too. So because usually first episodes are so boring, you kind of are starting to f- figure out their storyline. So like they came in, they came in quick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chantal actually has her in laws over, so she has to get out of here. Yes. So thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we'll update yep. you with all Jersey stuff and whatever else is going on. The we'll valley do the night. valley. Yeah, valley. Yeah. We're gonna do. Yeah. All right, you guys. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the roaring 20s. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device or play on PC through Facebook games.